Okay, so this is Subly Smarts. And I do want to start with letting you all know that we do have summer housing. So if you're looking for summer session housing, um, we do have university owned housing for summer sessions A, summer sessions A and B, and summer session B. And those will be in our undergraduate apartments in Westgate, El Dorado, and Santa Inez. So if you do need summer session housing, you can apply at the link below. You could just Google search UCSB summer housing and it'll take you to the link in the application process. Um, once you apply, we will be sending contract offers in like beginning or middle of May, I would say. So just make sure that if you apply, you check your UCSB email every day for a contract offer. Okay, so subleasing is to replace somebody who's already in the house. And on our rental listings website, we actually have um, an area where you can look for somebody to sublet from you. Um, and then we also have an area on our website and I'll talk more about the website, but we have an area on our website where you can post a housemaid needed or available. So you can say, hey, I'm looking for somebody to rent from me and you can go ahead and post there. I just wanted to kind of talk about the two different um, options, whether you want to sublet or you want to replace somebody. So what exactly is subleasing? So subleasing is when the original tenant is away and a subletter will take over the contract for a certain amount of time. We usually say um, a, a good amount of time to find a subletter is around three months. Sometimes to find a subletter for six months or beyond that, it would be better to do a lease takeover because um, that way you're not responsible for um, any damages or rent owed. And so six months could be a lot of time for somebody to be living in your space um, for you. Um, the landlord is not always involved in the subletting process. So you need to make sure to look at your lease or your contract to see what the terms are for subletting in your contract. Most often for subleasing, um, you be, are the landlord and your sublessor is your tenant. So for example, I have a space in Isla Vista and I'm gonna be leaving for the summer and I'm looking for somebody to live in my space for three months during the summer. And Dora um, contacts me and wants to sublet from me. She would become my tenant and I would become her landlord meaning that often the management company doesn't, um, sometimes they'll be involved, but so that most of the time you'll be responsible for getting rent payments from your subletter, making sure you receive a security deposit from your subletter. So it's just important to look at the terms of your contract to make sure you know exactly what your management company is asking or not asking for when it comes to subtenants. Um, I touched on this a little bit before, but don't confuse subletting with reassignment. So a reassignment means that you're leaving permanently and you need to find a replacement and re that will remove your name from the lease and put somebody else's name on the lease. So a good example of this is I had a student who after winter quarter wasn't going to be returning to UCSB and, or sorry, after fall quarter wasn't going to be returning to UCSB and came to the office and asked for a sub a subletter. And we explained to them that if they're not gonna be returning, it's gonna be better for them to find a, somebody to take over their lease or do a reassignment because that way their name will become off the lease completely and the new person will put their name on the lease. So that way you're no longer responsible for that space. There's typically a fee um, associated with reassignment or lease takeovers. And again, it's gonna be dependent on which management company you're with and what the terms of your lease are. Um, often roommates, so if Dora, Jesse, and I are living together and Jesse's leaving, um, typically Dora and I will be have to sign off on whether or not we agree, on whether we agree to the replacement. So we usually say you can't find any warm body to live in your space. So if Dora, Jesse, and I are living together and Jesse's leaving, 
I just can't find anybody to take over. Just Jesse just can't find anybody to take over her space. We have to have some agreement upon who she chooses. But on the other end of that, um, Dora and I can't say no to everybody. So there's just this little bit of a gray area there where we have to mutually agree upon somebody. We can't just say no to everybody Jesse brings, but Jesse also can't just bring, you know, maybe we're not comfortable living with a male and she just can't bring a bunch of guys over as potential replacements for her. So there's a little bit of conversation that needs to happen when you're finding somebody to take over your lease and for a sublet too. Okay, so how do you find a place to live? So if I am going to not be here for summer and I have a lease in Isla Vista and I'm looking for somebody, um, I'm sorry, let me turn that around. If I have a lease for fall, but I need somewhere for the summer, how do I find a place to live? So we have a community rental database. It's um, handled through Rent College Pads, but it's a rental listings database we like to call the glorified Craigslist because only UCSB students, faculty, and staff can post there. But you could post yourself as a housemate available, and um, you could also post in sublease needed. Make sure to update your postings every 30 days. Um, we have a lot of students that will look there because they are um, looking, they're not gonna be here for summer, so they're looking for somebody to take over their space. There's also Facebook groups. So we try to monitor those Facebook groups, but I just want you to proceed with caution that anything too good to be true probably is. Don't send money, don't sign anything until either you've checked with our office first, or you find out who the management company is. So if I'm looking for a place and I find this great place, um, it seems to fit all of my needs. I'll ask, um, hey, who's your management company? And they're like, oh, my management company is Meridian Group. I would call Meridian Group and say, hey, I'm looking to sublet from this tenant. Their name is blank. Can you let me know if they have a lease with you? And they said, yeah, they do. So that that way I'm just doing my due diligence to make sure that this person actually is a tenant there. Um, there's just a lot of scams. So Dora, Jesse, and I just want to make sure that before you move forward with sending any money or signing a sublet um, to rent from somebody that you, you check with the management company first. Alternatively, you could do that as well as ask the um, current person that you're gonna be subletting from to actually go see the place. Um, and if you have any doubt, any question, just email us with screenshots of the communication you've been having maybe a screenshots of the ad and we can take a look at it for you. So this is our rented listings website that I talked about earlier. So you can actually go to our to the site. Um, if you just Google search UCSB community housing rental listings, this will pop up. So you could post yourself in housemate available. You can post yourself in sublet. And alternatively, if you're having a place that you want to rent out, you can post here as well. This is where we push all of our students to post because we were able to monitor it a little bit more. So these are the Facebook groups. So there's Ivy Housing for UCSB students and UCSB Housing. Again, just proceed with caution. I know a lot of students are posting on these sites and we're reviewing them and trying to make sure that um, they're not scams, but it's getting a lot harder for us to um, to notice scams because they're getting really tricky. So we just wanna make sure that if you do go through Facebook or Craigslist that um, you check with us before signing anything or sending money. Okay, these are gonna be, this is gonna be a little bit long, but I'm gonna go through everything that you need to know in order to have subleasing success. So the first step is just to make sure that everyone meets your potential subletter. So. If Jesse, Dora, and I are living together and our third roommate, our fourth roommate is looking for a subletter, just make sure that we're able to meet them so we think know that it's gonna be a good fit. Most often you're gonna be living with them for three months. So it's good that we have some sort of a relationship and a say in who's gonna be living there. You're gonna decide on how much will be charged for rent, utilities, and the deposit. Um, just so you know, sub or subless, during the summer, if you're subletting, 
the supply is really high, but the demand is low. So we have a lot of people looking for subletters and not as many students staying for summer. So I would um, suggest that you, you start asking for whatever it is that you're paying. So if you're paying $1,000 a month, maybe start looking for a subletter at $1,000 a month. But if you're not getting any hits, you could always lower it a little bit because you're still going to be, um, you're still not going to be making money, but you may be paying maybe $300 instead of not $900 or $1,000 over the course of a few months. So you may want to negotiate the terms a little bit lower the rent price, or maybe say I'll pay for utilities. So you can negotiate a little bit there. You should always ask for a security deposit. Often we say a security deposit should be equal to one month's rent. Um, and again, make sure you have contact with the manager or owner so they'll know who will be living there for the summer. This is really important when it comes um, to emergencies. If there's a house fire or something happens, just so that the management company knows that you're not there, but this person's going to be there. With your subletter or if you're subletting from somebody, make sure to get everything in writing. So if you have a conversation with somebody on the phone, you follow up with an email and you just kind of keep running communication. Um, don't exchange any money without getting anything in writing and seeing the place you're gonna be renting and knowing, contacting the management company to make sure that the person that you're renting from actually has a lease with them. I usually say it's best to use checks, cashiers, checks, or money orders and not cash. Um, please don't wire money. Um, I know a lot of students now are using Venmo and Zelle, and I think that's okay because there's documentation about what's being sent and the amount and to whom. Just make sure to write a memo in there if you are going to be paying by one of those apps. Um, we do say to try not to sublet to anybody not affiliated with Santa UCSB. And the reason why we say that is there's a lot of students, or there's a lot of people that come to Isla Vista for the summer to work and party, but not go to school. And they, if they aren't affiliated with UCSB and something happens, and let's say they cause $10,000 worth of damage, and then they just leave, um, if they're part of UCSB, we have a way to be able to contact them or have connection. If they're not, it's a lot harder for us to help track down. So UCSB or Santa Barbara City College, I think would be okay, but it's just when folks are coming to UC to Isla Vista um, for the summer to just hang out, it can get a little sticky. Um, again, make sure everything's in writing. It, we have a sublease um, form that I'll show you. And so just make sure to fill that out with all the details, get everything in writing. Um, don't take cash as payment if possible and just start to look now. So if you're looking for a subletter, you could start look now. If you're looking for somewhere to sublease for summer, start look now. And again, if you're in doubt, reach out. That's our tagline. Make sure to contact us so we can just make sure everything is above board and that you don't get scammed. There's just a lot of scams out there. So this is a sublease agreement form that we have online. Again, you could go to our link that's um, posted here, but you could also just Google search UCSB housing um, sublease form and these all these forms will pop up. You need to make sure that you fill it all out. I actually have students add addendums to it. You know, maybe there's something here that um, that's not on this form, but maybe parking terms or um, information about their um, permanent home address a copy of their license or a copy of their passport. So the more information you can get about who's going to be subletting from you, the better. Get all of that information, make copies of it. You keep the original and give a copy to your management company, and then you would actually give a copy to the per other person as well. So just make sure that you have um, everything filled out and so all the terms are agreed upon. We have a lot of students asking whether or not um, but for housing in between terms. So between spring and summer, we have interim housing that's offered through conference services. And so it's called June temporary housing. It's $60 a night. So if you're looking for that, 
that's an option for you. And then we also have it offered in September between summer and when fall begins. Again, you can look up September temporary housing and it's run through conference services. And so we have it in June and September so that if you're looking for um, an interim stay, you can check there. Um, if you're going to be subleasing your space for summer, so you're looking, you're not going to be here for summer, I highly suggest you do a move in, move out video to document any pre existing conditions on your place before your subletter comes in or before you all move in. So, this is a how to guide. Um, I'll have this slideshow presentation posted on our rental listing website but it'll give you everything you need to know in order to do this video. Um, I suggest you do a video instead of photographs because with a video, you can narrate kind of what's going on and you're, it's really detailed. You'll start at the front door, you'll move through the entire house, the whole kitchen, open and close blinds and drawers and windows, look at all the screens, but you're able to narrate. So you can say there's a hole in the carpet in the living room and you can scroll in, or you can say there's, um, you know, a wobbly towel rack in the bathroom off bedroom A. Um, so you're just to kind of narrating and documenting what's going on. And then you'll do it again upon move out, but it's just really good to um, have that documentation as soon as you move in. And this is our information. So you can email our general housing info email. We respond to this email Monday through Fridays from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We are open in our office from 9 to 4.30 p.m. We give ourselves an hour in the morning and 30 hours, 30 minutes in the afternoon um, to just be able to catch up on things. So we are open for in-person 9 to 4.30, but we, and we answer phones, phones from 9 to 4.30 as well. And we're located on the third floor of the University Center. So if you walk into the main doors where the campus store and Starbucks our, um, there's a stairway on the left-hand side and you go upstairs and we're located above the basic needs office. And that is it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop my share, but are there any questions? If you wanna unmute and ask us questions, you can feel free. Um, no questions? Well, I can kind of answer some of them. Somebody has, um, a student that lives in an off-campus apartment, can they use the site to find a sublacer? Yes. So that's what our rental site is for, is for everything off-campus. So um, students are posting there and on social media sites. Um, I am going to be posting a link to this video on our housing options website. So if you go to UCSB commute, or sorry, UCSB housing options, it'll be posted there. Um, the sublease agreement, we actually, we went over that, but again, Google's your best friend. Google search sublease agreement form UCSB housing and it'll, it'll pop up. And just make sure to add any addendums to the back of that, whether or not it's parking or, you know, more details about utilities or if they have a pet and that you have if they have an ESA and you're taking that. So there's just various things. Just make sure to be super detailed in whatever agreements you make with the person that's going to be subletting from you. But we know that all situations are different. So if you have specific questions, just email us. Dora will put our email in the chat if you want to copy and paste that. But we're more than happy to answer any questions because you'll probably get off this video and realize that you forgot to ask us something. Um, but before we hop off, are there any other questions from anybody? Don't be shy. I'm gonna ask a quick question. Sure. Um, my, we have a subletter lined up. My son's moving in his first year off campus and he's in a Sierra, I think it's Sierra Madre Management Company. Um, he's got four roommates. We have a summer subletter lined up for summer. And then we also have, he's gonna be going abroad in the fall, his junior year. So we also have someone for the fall. The fall kid is coming from Germany and he just secured his um, travel visa and yep. he's at UCSB. 
um, both kids are talking to each other, you know, on Instagram, both kids are feeling each other out, making sure that neither one is a scam. I mean, I wanted, I was trying to make sure my, I wanted my son to make sure this kid wasn't a scam. He was really concerned my son was a scam. So is there any way that we have as far as communicating with you or that he can communicate with you guys to maybe check to make sure that this kid is enrolled at UCSB? I think the best thing that I usually tell students to do is to email each other from the UCSB email addresses. And he will have that if he's already yep. coming to the fall. Okay. If somebody's an EAP student or an extension student, they'll get a UCSB email address. Great. Yeah. And if for some reason, if your student's still concerned, they could reach out to our office and we can check. And since I have two, uh, we have two of these sublease agreements to to do. Is it okay to go ahead and do it right now for the kid that's yep. coming in the fall? Yep. And okay. I would do them both and then just make sure that there's a little bit of a turnover between. So I don't know if you plan on coming to just make sure that the, that the person in summer, when they check out, that everything's above board before the new person moves in. And that way it doesn't land on all the roommates. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Thank and you. then make sure to take a security deposit from both. Yes. And that security deposit is the refundable security deposit if nothing goes wrong in Correct. addition to that. Okay. Yep. And I would usually do it equal to one month's rent and then just hold on to it so that if they don't skip out on rent and that they've paid everything and that there aren't any damages, then it could be returned. I usually tell people to withhold like $50 or so to just, uh, uh, to just um, account for cleaning because it is three months of them living in that space. And so you know, everybody at the end is going to have to pay for a full cleaning when they move out. So I think it's appropriate to withhold a little bit for cleaning. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Are there any other questions? Okay. Well, just make sure that you connect with our office and know that we're here to support you through the process. We know it's new a lot of times for everybody. So just let us know. Um, and we have a lot of, st of students always reaching out to us saying, hey, I'm looking for a subletter. So you could always connect with us to see if we know of anybody. All right, everybody. We'll have a great day and we'll see you soon. Bye.